How we doing guys, myself Chris Predator OBE hitting you a quick one. I just literally came out of Pentonville prison for doing my inspirational talk, talking about ego and acceptance and, and saying to guys, when are you gonna take accountability? When are you gonna take it to the next level to know that the power is in with you? I said to them, think of something that's come second nature to you, that is your gift. Think of something that's second nature to you, that's your gift. And it was so amazing to be able to inspire them and the, the, the workers and even the staff and even the prison wardens. They were like, you smashed it. You smashed it so well. We want you back on Thursday. So I'm going to be going back into Pentagall on Thursday to do some more workshops with the young people, do some more inspirational talks with the men. And also in November now, we're going to be carrying that series of mentoring workshops, series of workshops in the sense of debating workshops, inspirational workshops, but most importantly, speaking to the men about their mental health, checking in on their health. Certain of them are suffering through mental health, whether they're taking drugs, and it's the same thing with my lupus, it's autoimmune, but sometimes a lot of us don't know how to check in, don't know how to speak about certain things. You might be taking something to mask up on how you really, really feel deep down inside. You know, one's there, you might be feeling a pain on your leg, your chest, your back, and you don't want to check in. You don't want to go to the doctors. We don't like the doctors, but that's why it's becoming your own doctor. Going back to the services, going back to the things that we naturally use every single day. Honey, ginger, turmeric, you know, one's there, making sure that we're sitting down and putting certain things of healing process, making sure that we're doing exercise. These were things that we already knew. So I said to them, men, how much of you lot pay attention to your insides? Don't worry, I'll wait. I said, some of you men are looking ants, looking fresh, all the rest of it. But how much of you are paying interest to your insides? How much of you lot are checked your downstairs? My dad passed away of process cancer this year. Just why not checking in? Because my dad was like, man, I want man, put man in him and I'm a back. I hear you. No man don't want them to put hand up your bum bum. I hear it. But if you're going to be in that much pain, what is the point? To a point where now you're going to be begging them to put their... Do you understand? We need to check in, men. And what's no good of checking in to a point where you're not good to anyone? You don't want to check in, now all of a sudden you've lost your life. You don't want to check in, now all of a sudden you're like me, hospitalised. Laying in a hospital, hospital, um, hospital bed. Can't move, can't do nothing. And you're sitting there saying to yourself... No matter how much trainers that I had, no matter how much accolades I had, no matter how much cars, no matter how much properties that I have, I'm laying in this bed and I can't even enjoy it. I'm laying in this bed and I can't even live it. I'm laying in this bed and I can't even pick up my son. I'm laying in this bed, I can't even hug my missus and kiss my missus because I'm in that much pain. But I didn't take the time out to think about, are you okay? Is your mental health okay? Is your body okay? Have you got peace in your life? Are you happy? What are you doing that is an addiction? Is it a positive addiction? Are you drinking too much? Are you smoking too much? Are you running around committing crimes? Have you got a fetish for clothes and fashion and brands? Because guess what? Gucci don't love you. Just throwing that one out there. Mercedes don't love you. So all you man that's still going, getting your cars on HP and all the rest of it, there's no point of spending 350 a month and you don't even have it in your bank account. I said to these men, how much of you like guys know how to live by yourself? Let's just keep it real. How many of you guys know how to live by yourself? You're either living with your missus or you're going back to your mum's. Let's just keep it real, Papa. Some of you don't even know money management. But you can buy a drawer, you can buy a weed, £40, £60. You find the money for that, but you can't find the money to put down for your house, for vegetables, for food in your fridge. To understand that you might need toiletries. You might need Dettol. You might need bleach. You might need fairy liquid. Just the basics. But some of us don't understand the basics and some of us are sitting there wanting to change our life but half of us don't know how to. We rely on women so much and this is to the mothers out there that are single parents. You are nurturing your son, great. But you're nurturing them to a point where they don't know how to stand on their own two feet. If your child's over the age of 20 something and he's 30 something and he's still living at home, something needs to be done. Check in. Why aren't you working? Why aren't you out now renting out a place? Why haven't you now found a good woman and both of you are buying your own property? So parents, I'm sitting and I'm saying to you, I know we're trying to take care of our children and there's a lot of parents right now that are nine to fives and they're still supporting their child's habits. They're still supporting their child, giving them the money to smoke the weed. You're enabling him. He's not going to change nothing because he knows that mommy's always going to bail him out. We've got a lot of men that are sitting behind that prison door. You have now enabled your child to feel like it's okay to not have a dad around, it's okay to live a certain life and not be accountable. Allowing the mother just to sit there and be accountable and we can't keep blaming the women. We've got to rise up and step up as men. 
And a lot of us as men, we always keep saying the same thing. Oh, it wasn't my fault, brother. No acceptance. Accept it. Your ego. Oh, no, brother. Accept it. Accept where you've gone wrong and how you can be better. So I just wanted to do, give you guys a little update on being in Pentonville Prison, engaging with the young men, but engaging with them so much that they want me to come back Thursday and they also want me to do some more work in November. So that just goes to show, if you're a facilitator, if you're a worker out there, if there's anybody that needs me to come into your school, colleges, youth clubs, prisons, whatever it is, let's engage. The biggest thing that I learned is plant the seed. A lot of people are like, oh, what if they don't change, Chris? What if they don't change? We're trying to expect to see results too quick and too fast. I've just planted the seed. It might be three months, it might be six months, it might be a year, it might be two years, it might be three years, but plant the seed. Allow them to know that they can grow. Allow them to know they can be someone better. And one of the guys, Blue man, big up to Blue, and he sat there and he said something really, really interesting. He was like, Chris, I'm trying to change and I want to change. But guess what? If they don't help me to change, I'm just gonna go mad. And that's how a lot of these guys feel, in a sense of sometimes they're screaming out. They want help, they want that acceptance, they want that understanding. But we still don't want to accept them because we feel like, oh, you're a criminal, oh, you're this, you're that. Some of them are. Some of them are rehabilitating, but some of them are suffering with trauma. Some of them are suffering with anxiety. Some of them are suffering with depression. Some of them are suffering not having parents growing up in their life or their parents were just as bad, so they wasn't being able to talk. Some of these boys that have never had men in their life, so some of them are, are acting out in a woman's way. Like, even me, 37 years of age, and my missus had to tell me, living with your mum, you argue too much, big man. You're meant to be a grown-ass man, Chris. I'm there bickering with her every five minutes, nah, 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 back and forth. So I spoke to a couple of real men, and they was like, big man, you don't do that. Let her talk. You stay silent. We're logical. We find a solution. We find the answers. You don't be going back and forth and arguing with a female. But I wasn't taught that. I didn't have a man around me to teach me that. I didn't have a male figure to growing up to tell me, this is how you conduct yourself. This is how you act. This is what you do in certain scenarios. And I know mothers are trying to do the best, but my mother tried, she tried to get me to be a man that she wanted me to be, but it was only in the man that she had in her mind. Because in the end, she didn't end up finding him anyway. No disrespect, mum, but you didn't end up finding this man that you tried to create me to be. And if not, it was only a thought and a process of what you believed. It wasn't actually true on the man that she was trying to create me to be. She just wanted it better for her life on the relationships that she had. So she decided to say, do you know what? I'm going to get my son to do A, B and C, which was great. I got some great attributes from women, great attributes in the sense of communicating, being able to open up about my feelings, emotionally available, I'm mostly available, all these kind of things. But at the same time, there's many things that I didn't been able to take from my dad, wasn't able to take from my man. Being able to stand on my own two feet, I'm 37 years of age and I have my own property. How much men do we know that don't have their own property? How much men do we know that don't know how to stand on their own two feet and are relying on women because they haven't had a chance to be able to become men? Very, very powerful day to go today, guys, man. Very, very powerful. It just inspired me a little bit more just to know that there's still work that we need to do, but there's work being done. So big up to all of you guys that's out there, whether you're a community worker, whether you're a support worker, whether you're an educationalist, we thank you, we see you, I appreciate you. Because like, if we don't do it, no one else is doing it. But most importantly, parents, make sure your kids are on point. Make sure your kids are on form. Make sure you're just checking in and making sure that we're checking in on their health. But what's you guys' thoughts? Comment below.